I was telling you my 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 name's uh, Frankie Cornejo. Uh, I'm gonna pick off where I left off when 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 uh, when uh, I owed I owed Topo for 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 some drugs that was being smuggled in. Okay, at that time I owed Topo was the worst time of my life because everywhere I was walking, I'm thinking I'm gonna get stabbed because this man is. Topo, Topo, uh, uh, Benjamin Peters. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Oh, anyways, I owe Topo for some drug that, that was going to get smuggled in, which was two ounces. And my my lady at that time was Christina, Tina Holmes. Well, I didn't know at the time that she, when she came visit me the first time, she brought me some dope in. You got to remember, my, my, my parents do not know nothing about this. They're not no part of it, nothing. That time she came with my mother, and she, my mother didn't know nothing even about this. I, 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 well, anyways, she came and everything ran good. I gave, I, I kicked down people. At that time, Topo Peters wanted to get into his hand into they call it black hand. He wanted to get into my action because where I live at, there's a, I live next to the border, and there's a lot of good dope over there. Well, I told him it was easy for me to say yeah, so he invested some money with me, and what I did is I went and bought two ounces and was going to bring him in. But at the time, I didn't know that Christina Holmes, which is my ex-old lady, she was she was using. She got strung out. And the day I was waiting for the visit, she never showed up. So I'm worried to death because this man is the man. He's, he's like the second man in command of all the women, and I own. So everywhere I'm walking, I'm thinking I'm going to get stabbed. So I go tell some of my homies from my area the whole situation. One of my homies gives me some National Geographics, and he told me, make a make a jacket out of it. And I said, what do you mean make a jacket out of it? He says, yeah, you make a shirt. That way you put it on under your shirt. If they hit you, it's going to hit the National Geographics, and that won't probably kill you. So I go back home. You got to remember, I'm living with Gato, uh, 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 um, Richard Hernandez, I mean, Richard Martinez from the AMA2, and he's a lieutenant. I'm living with him. So, but I could trust him because he he he, he took a liking to me. So he knows the situation with Topo Peters. And even though they're in the end, they don't, they, some of them don't like each other. They just gotta work with each other. Well, Gato didn't like Topo. So when, when I, when I tell Gato this whole situation, Gato tells me, what are you gonna do if they don't have, if you can't locate her? And I said, she was, what can I do? And he goes, there's two things you can do. If you can't locate her, she can't come and you can't replace that money. Then what you need to do is go out like a man and take him out. Hit him when he's not suspecting. Hit him when he's not around tablas and he's not around uh, uh, bebito and all, and all the older carnales. Hit him and take him out. And I'll try and use my po- politics and shoot word to Joe and, and make up a story and say that, that he had uh, your, your wife robbed or, or, or something. I'll make up some kind of story to justify for what you did. But if you hit him and you don't kill him, then that's your ass. They're going to try and kill you. So I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm going through scenarios all my mind at, at that time. At that time, I went like a week without not even sleeping. If you can, I'm talking about I couldn't sleep at night. Every turn I'm going, I'm thinking I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get whacked. Everybody I'm walking through, I'm thinking I'm going to get hit. I always carried a fierro with me everywhere I went. Well, at that time, it's already going on three days, and I can't locate my old lady. So what I did is I called my best friend in my life, which is my, my, my father. I never involved him in nothing, but because at that time when I was, before I, before I got busted, at that time when I was putting all the Valle together, I, 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 I met a lot of people, older, older homies from my area that are real, real heavy and, 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 and drogas and got a lot of, a lot of money and a lot of, a lot of property and whatever. Well, I told my dad, I need you to get a hold of Volta which is an old homeboy of mine at that time. He was like John Gotti. He was like the Gotti of the all in Pearl Valley. And I knew he could help me. And I told my father, get a hold of him. I run my father the explanation of what went down with, with, with the Emory. Well, I was surprised that my father knew about the Emory. So my father tells me, hey, it's Humbert there, old man Humbert. And I said, yeah. Well, Humbert grew up with my father and Volta. So... I explained it to him. He says, tell him that to call me. And I told Humbert, Humbert, you saw, I hardly never seen him because he worked in the factory making license plates. So them dudes almost all the day, they're gone. And by the time you see him, it was at nighttime. So 
So what I did is I went over there looking for him like I was looking for a job in the license plate factory, that PIA. So when I found him, I ran it down to him, and he tells me, he tells me, hold on. He goes tell his boss, hey, I'll be back. I need to go take care of something. So he walks me, we walk, walk back to the yard. We walk, walk back to the yard, and he tells me, I'm going to go try and see if I can take care of this. See, Humber was an old, older, older homie that could have been a carnal de a long time ago that got asked back in the, in the 70s. But he never, never accepted it because he didn't like taking orders. He didn't, he, he didn't, he never, he never was one of those guys, a person that liked to take orders from certain people. So he just never got involved in it, in the politics, but he had juice. He had power, like if he was one, and a lot of the carnales respected him because he'd been around since the late 60s, early 70s. Well, anyways, he gets involved and I run it down to him while we go and he goes talks to Topo. Bopo tells him, tell me to don't worry about it, just as long as he gets that, that I take care of and get that done. Well, he comes and tells him, well, what happens if he don't? Can he pay you double your money back? And he says, no. Nah. He says, I want that, or, or, or we're going to take it from there. So when he says that, Humber comes and tells me, Humber says, look, give me a word, give me a week, where, where, where you don't touch my little homies, and I'll make sure this gets taken care of. He goes, and Bopo told him, yeah. So he comes back and tells me that, and he comes, what do you, what do you, what do you, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm trying to see if I can get a hold of my lady and get, I, I already talked to her. I told my dad to get a hold of Volta. He goes, I'm going to, I'm going to try and call Volta too. He grew up with Volta. Well, he, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Well, at this time, I, I, this is already like, like the fourth day. At this time, I tell him, okay, he goes, just be cool. Don't do nothing. And if you're going to do something, let me know. I'm going to go with you. I said, okay. So I'm going, next day I go to work. I go to work. Boom, I'm coming out of that time I worked in the kitchen in one building. I'm coming out of one building, and there's my homeboy, uh, Trampa. There's my homeboy, uh, uh, Wine on the right there. Well, Trampa tells me, come on, let's go play some handball. And we're right there in front of, right when you walk out of one building, the front handball course right there by the yard. He said, I'm not tired, I don't want to play. Well, he said, come on, fool. So we start playing handball. It's me. Tampa, my keyboard partners, and we're playing against uh, 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 Widow Sherm and, 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 and Wimpy from San Isidro, Garnas Sherm. So we're playing, boom, Angel from, uh, from Whitefins has Kelly, and, and, and Chico from Hazard has Kelly. And in the corner right there by the ice machine, I could see that Topo's right there, Garnas Topo, uh, Old Man Bebito, Garnas Bebito, Tablas, Garnas Tablas is there. Well, they're all looking at me, and he waves at me. So we're playing handball, and as we're playing, I'm thinking that they're setting me up. I think this is where they're going to hit me at. So I'm thinking, so I'm playing, and I'm being cautious. At the same time, I'm being cautious. They hit the ball, boom, and I go to the back, and I go almost to the fence where the yard's at to hit the ball. And as I'm turning, boom, I see one of the, 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 the younger carnales, boom, hits fucking, hits fucking angel right in the back. Boom, big-ass sword. Boom, it comes, you can see the point come out of the front of his chest. And it was kind of weird because he fell down like, like leaning, leaning on his, on his knees with his head on the ground. He had a, he had a blue sweatshirt on so you couldn't see the blood. You couldn't even see the blood. So as he's laying down, Trampa gets my hand and says, let's go, fool. And he pulls me walking and I'm looking and we take off, fool. By the time we take off, we walk right around with the little fences that, from the yard in front of one building, and they say, get down, boom, they shoot in the air, so we all get down, we get down, and as we get down, what happens to be there, we're all like in a circle, and it's me, Trampa, uh, uh, Wettersherm, Wimpy, uh, Bebito, uh, Topo, and Tablas, and we're right there, and my dumbass homies, Trampa says, he tell me, fuck, you want to even see what happens, said, yeah, and he says, hopefully that doesn't happen to you, you better take care of that shit. And I tell him, yeah, I'm gonna take care of it. And I'm thinking, and 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 Popo's right there looking at me. And I'm thinking, I didn't like what he said. That's so why I said, uh, like he was using that like an example. So I told him, look, if, if, if you think I'm not gonna handle that, and somebody's gonna come at me, which I'm talking to Popo, but indirectly I'm looking at my homies. I said, you come at me. Be like a man and come at me with a fear. And he's like, well, that's what's gonna happen if, it, if you don't take care of it. Cause I'm from Broly, and like I told you, Emmett first. Roll a sack, and I'm gonna have to come at you that way. So I'm like, okay, then come at me like a man. 
Popo gets involved and says, God, calmate, calmate, kick back. So we kick back. At this time, everybody, orale. At this time, everybody's making holes in the ground to stash their fierros. Everybody has fierros. So I'm making a hole, but I got my fierro in, the, in, in, in my shoe. And I don't want to show Popo that I'm strapped everywhere I go. So I said, fuck it. I, I, I got to dig the hole and take it out of my shoe because they, here they come because they're going to they're gonna strip everybody. So I take out the fierro. And I stick the, I stick, I had an ice pick that, that, that Gato gave me, and I stick it in the ground. And I'm sticking in there, and Topo tells me, what are you doing with the fierro? And I said, I always carry one. And then he says, okay, okay. So after that happened, boom, they, they strip us, take us back. We go to the building and everything. At this time, my homeboy, Wino Pelona, worried about me because they seen the little junta they had, so I think they think something's going to happen. I lived in the third tier in three buildings. Why no them in the fourth tier that were Sally's? So, Pelon comes and says, you all right? And I said, yeah. And he says, what's up? And he says, I tell him, don't worry, I'm going to try and take care of that. But really, I haven't got a hold of my lady, Tina, at this time. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that, 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 that I'm going to have to take uh, point A and try and hit both of them. Well, I'm all fucking, next day we wake up, okay? Next day I wake up, I'm going to go to work. And as I'm walking to 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 two building, here comes Wino Pelon. They tell me, what's up, fool? And I say, you know what I'm thinking? I'm just hitting this fool. And they say, come on, let's go. We'll go with you. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking about going over there to hit this fool. And, and hold on, hold on. Okay, like I was telling you, at this time, this is the next day now, I wake up and I already explained to Turato what's going on. And I told him, I said, look, man, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't get a holder. I might have to hit, I might have to hit Topo. And me telling him that can put me in danger because he's a carnal, but I trust him so much that I know he's not going to tell because I know he, he's trying to fight for power to become a, a captain. So I know he's using all politics to get Topo out the way. you got to remember, at that time, it was county, 619 was all together. L.A. was all together. Then they're, they're, they're same men, and they, they didn't like each other. You knew what was going to happen if it was an area code thing, if a war happened. Well, anyways, at that time... That's when Wino Pelon came and told me, what's going on, homie, what do you want to do? And I told him, you know what I'm thinking, just hitting this fool. And he goes, look, well, we've got to go to, to, to fire building as we do, and we've got to take him out. So I said, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. And, I, and we're going, as we're going, you gotta, when you get out of three blocks, you walk to two blocks. So we're walking to two blocks, we're strapped up already, and we're going that way. We're talking to a couple of people, you know, your regular people you see. And as we're going right there by the barber shop, there's a barber shop in the in, in the end of two blocks. You go down the stairs and it's the kitchen. I said, that's, you got to go through there to go to five blocks. As we're going there, boom! This 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 gawacho starts hitting this black dude right there in the barber shop. Boom, boom! So the guns go out. Boom, boom! We open fire and everything. Get down, get down! So we get down, and as we get down, we're right there because the phones are right next across, right across from the barber shop is the phones. So as we get down, there's nobody in the phone. I get down. And we're down, they're taking in dudes, they, and the ambulance, uh, the ambulance come, they take them dudes in the gurney, they shot one of the dudes, uh, uh, Irish, they shot him in the leg, boom, the black dude got shot too. Well, anyways, I'm right there on the phone, and my homeboy tells me, call, see if you can get a hold. So I get, I get the phone, and I call right there as we're down, and I'm calling, and boom, I get a hold of my lady. She answers the phone, and I'm like, what happened, girl? And she's telling me the whole situation that... You know, she started using and she got into it and she ended up, when she took off to come see me, she, she, she got put to San Diego and ended up staying there. Long story short, she went through all the drugs. Well, long story short, she tells me, hey, don't worry, I'm going to be there this weekend and don't worry, I got everything. So I'm assuming that Walter gave her everything and my father, whatever. Well, anyways, I tell her, all right, just be here. Don't let me down. She goes, she goes don't worry, I'm going to be there. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be there. So yeah, the week comes. I I, I mean, I wake up. I mean, I, my my spirits get up, but I'm not really for sure because, you know, she's a dolphin. You know, she became a dolphin. I hate to say it, but she became a dolphin and let me down. I could I could have had my my life could have been over with. I could have got killed. Well, anyways, I'm wait, waiting right now. I tell the homies, and they tell, what do you think? You still want to ask them? Nah, let's forget about it. So we end up going back to the building take off, go back, and I tell my son, he got more. I tell him, look, this was going on, this and this, and he goes, look, tomorrow we're going to go tell him that it's on for this weekend, and if it don't happen this weekend, then I'm telling you, Carnalito, he's telling me, Carnalito, 
you're going to have to take them out right there and then, even if it happens in front of them, in the yard or whatever, because they're going to come hit you, and they're going to kill you. So I'm like, all right. So next day, yeah, we go out to the yard. When we go out, there's me, a uh, uh, Gato, old man Gato, Carnal from San Diego, old man Humber's there, and my homies. Trampa was there, but they made him get back. Cause, you know, he's talking crazy. They told him, get the fuck back. So anyways, we tell him, and, and, and Topo says, está bien todo? And he goes, yeah. So at that time, they just released uh, uh, Elfie from the oil. They just released him from in back of one block. Well, my homeboy Humber got word back there. And when he comes back, Elfie comes, and he sees Topo, he saludes everybody, and he tells Topo, I need to talk to you. So he pulls him aside, and he says, I hear when they're talking. He tells them, hey, Joe te manda saludas, and Joe says, hey, uh, to get off his feet. He, 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 he told him like this, he says, I see that you're all over my feet with the little homies, little conejito from Roy. So get off my feet, and then that's all he told him. So he, he just says, oh, that's what he said. He says, yeah. He says, nah, I, I ain't even on his feet. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Alfie doesn't know nothing about who I am and none of that situation. He don't know nothing. So... When Topo comes, Topo tells me, look, uh, uh, I want you to ha handle that this weekend, pero no le diga nada a Joe. And I said, nah. He goes, look, don't, don't, don't go behind my back telling anything to Joe. Somebody told him. So I'm saying, nah. So I'm like, he goes, all right. Well, long story short, yeah, that weekend, my lady comes. Everything goes as smooth as planned. I go out there. As soon as I go out there, she's out there. And my, I got a brother that lived in Elk Grove at that time, like I'm not around. So she stayed there, I guess, and then she came. I guess my brother dropped her off, and she walked in by herself. Well, when I go to visit, I see her. I see her there. I sit down. David's right there, Pelonca, not David. He's the cameraman. So I give him the signal, and I got that. I give him a soda. I say, you want a soda? I give it to him. And all of it's in there. But it's four ounces. It's not two. She brought four, and I guess my homies... I asked her why did you, I mean, why is it for? And she said, I, uh, uh, Volta said to, that, that to, this is double what you owe because Volta did like 20 something years in San Quentin and Old Folsom and he knows all them dudes. So he knows the way the rules are. Volta thought that even though me paying him, I was going to get hit, which I actually thought I was because of me owing that long because I owed him for a week. So I'm thinking I'm going to get whacked anyways. No, when I came back from visit, I'm coming back. My homies are waiting for me. Trampa's there. Uh, 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 all my homies are right there waiting for me. And I come in the tier and three block. Uh, Topo's right there with Dave. And he comes and he gives me two ounces back to me. He goes, here. I said, what's this for? He goes, this is yours. I got my issue. You got yours. Both are in. We're going to go from here. And I go, no, no, no. That's too I tell him, I'm not going to do nothing no more. I can't chance it. Because I'm going to be honest with you, the reason I, I, I couldn't get what I had coming is because my lady ran off. I guess she's using. She just told me right on the visit. So I can't really trust her. And he goes, ah, don't worry about it. We'll get it straight. And I'm like, no. Nah. Well, that's when my homeboy Humbert steps in and he says, hey, Topo, tú me conoces. Te estoy diciendo que sabes que ya estuvo. Aquí se muere because el Joe ya me mandó palabra que just back away from the little homies because he has plans with them when he gets out. At this time, like maybe three weeks later, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're in the buildings, and we already know that something's going down because they kidnapped Joe and took Joe by himself. He was one of the first ones that they took, and we don't know where he went to. So they shoot word out of the oil, and they say, hey, they just took Joe. We don't know where they put him at. So everybody's thinking, where'd he go? So the next, the next couple of days, they take like 50 dudes from the oil, all carnales from them, and they take him, they kidnap him, boom, and they, we got word that they shot him to Tehachapi. At that time, they just barely opened up Tehachapi's shoe. So they shot him to Tehachapi. They passed this new thing that's called indeterminate, where you get indeterminate time in the hole if you're validated uh, uh, a member of any organized or, or any, any organized prison gang. Well, they were the first ones. At that time, I wasn't living with... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Got the parole, and I moved in with... With, 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 with Widow Caballo from 18th Street. I really didn't want to, but they did the move, and I'm thinking, well, Topo has me moved in there in case if I do something, he just fucking kill me in the cell, which is Widow Caballo, because he's dead. He, he, he's in the yard here. He had, like, like three murders still in the yard, walking in the yard. We got away with it. Well, anyways, 
I'm thinking that's why they moved me in that cell. But I said, hey, you, back then you couldn't tell, like, I'm not going to move in with him. You had to go. So I moved in with him. Well, when they came and they kidnapped the Carnales from the yard in 1986, November, he was one of the first ones. So at nighttime, they came, like 12 o'clock at night. They said, Cornell, they said, you step to the door, cuff up. They called, uh, they called, they called, where do cuff up? Boom. They call him up, take him. They say, you know who this guy is? I said, yeah, make sure you roll up all his property. And yeah, I'm rolling up his property. And they, here they go. They go to Artie's house. Artie lives like three doors down from us. And then they go to, and then they go to, to, uh, to Tigre's house. And then they go to, to, uh, 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 what's it called? Alfie's house. And they're, they're, everybody's hollering needles, están llevando todos. So they're taking all kinds of carnales from them. And, and this is 12 o'clock at night, November. They're just kidnapping them. Boom. And they're shooting them to New Folsom. They just barely opened up New Folsom, a facility. Nobody was in the prison. So they take everybody. We wake up in the morning and they release us for yard. There was only three carnales in the yard at that time. They took everybody. The only one that was there was Gato from Mexicali. Gato, uh, Gato Marquez from Mexicali. Uh, 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 what's his name from Santa Pala? Uh, 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 Toto Man from Santa Pala. Spider, Spider from uh, Rajin from Logan Heights. Oh, and, 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 and make take that back. Four Carnales and Big Richard from Orange County. Carnal Richard and these Carnales were the only reason they were left behind because the administrator didn't know about them because they just became Carnales in, back in the oil. So at that time, a lot of shit was going on because. They took all the carnales, so all the structure just broke down with the airmen because these dudes don't know what's going on. Everything they had going on, gambling, money, uh, everything they had going on, drug, everything, it was falling to pieces. And the only one that was holding it together was Gato Marquez because he, he, he seen that he said, no, nah, I'm not going to get involved in using because whenever we get all together again, they're going to take us out. And Regine, uh, 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 he was using... Uh, Rick Big Richard from Orange County, and I Richard, he was using Gargan, and didn't care about what's going on. Uh, 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 Toto Man, he got a little bit smart and backed up because he was, he was, he was, Gato Marcus himself. He said, Yeah, you know what, Cyrus Kid, I'm not used. At that time, they killed Old Man Rocky, they killed the, the, the old shoemaker, uh, 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 puppet. They killed, they killed uh, like four different dudes for different reasons of, of holding grudges in between Sureños that are incarnales in the end. Because there was really nobody to enforce the rules, really, like they were all gone. So it was like a big old free for all, because everybody was just fighting for power or fighting for to to for, for to establish themselves. So at that time, I'm already getting short to go home. I'm already getting like maybe within two months to go home. So I'm like, whatever happens, happens here. So I'm just trying to be as cool as I can. And both was gone on everybody. So I'm trying to be where I can just walking out. Well, at that time, boom, my release date comes, I parole, boom. When I paroled, it was me and Artie from Clover, and I walked out that little door right there where you see the tower right there in Old Folsom, the little door right there, I walked out of there, and my carnal picked me up, my carnal Ralph picked me up in his, in his BMW right there because he lives in Elk Grove. When I got out, there was a van out there, and I'm walking out, and I tell, I told the guy, I got a, I got a gate pickup, and he's like, nobody's here to pick you up, nobody knows. So as I'm walking out, my carnal says, Frankie, so I turn around, it's my carnal Ralph, I ain't seen him. And he comes, and I just start walking towards him, and the car say, you can't just leave. I say, man, I'm God, man, I'm free, I'm out of here. And I walk towards his car, and he gives me a hug, get on. And here comes Alfie from, from Clover, he says, hey, give me a ride to the airport. And I say, yeah, get on, fool. So he, we go, and we get in the car, and we take off, fool. We take off, and yeah, we drop him off. The cop says, hey, man, you can't do that. I say, man, I'm out free, I'm gone. Well, when I was in Sacramento, well, I had to get hold of of the, uh, 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 of of Ventura. Ventura lived right there in Sacramento, so I'm looking for him, trying to find him, because that was one of the things I had to do. I got a hold of him, talked to him, and I tell him, look, I'm getting out, I'm going to Valle, but first I got to stop in L.A. I got to see Sluggles in L.A. and, and, and has it. I'm, I'm going to stay there probably a day, and then I'm going to the Valle. Joe told me to keep in contact with you, and he goes, yeah. He goes, okay, portate bien, I'm going to be moving to the San Jacinto. So he goes, okay, I'll give you give me the numbers, everything, and I take off. Ooh. I take off, and in L.A., I call, I call Slugos, and I tell Slugos, hey, ven levanta, I'm right here in the Greyhound. He has me picked up with him and, like, five dudes in a, in a bomb. We go over there, and the reason that I went over there was because Joe wanted me, 
and a, a couple of Cardinals, those are Cardinals wanted me to investigate because at that time they were trying to put together to make the movie of America Me. And he wanted, he wanted me. To you have 60 seconds remaining. Who, which Cardinals are talking to, to James Ormos or who, which Cardinals are talking to, 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 uh, 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 Tony, Tony, uh, 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 Tony Asenso to see who's trying to make the movie because they didn't want that because nobody at that time gave them the okay to make the movie. The reason I share my story with you is because my whole goal is to, for one of you to hear my story, a kid or a female, or a youngster or older, it don't matter what situation you are, if my story can help you change your way of living and your way of being, then that's my whole intention because I'm really trying to help people out to change their way of living because prison life and, and, and any organization in prison, it's, it's not a life for someone to live. If you're headed that way, then you don't want to take that. That's why I'm sharing my story with you. I'm trying to help you plant the seed in your head to change your life because I went through a lot of different situations of my life in prison because I've been in prison all my life, and I wish I would have changed a long time ago so I wouldn't be wasting all these years in prison that I did because I went through a lot. I could tell you different times of when I almost got killed in prison, I almost got shot, situations like that, and that's why I do this. I'm kind of sharing my story with you to help one of you change out there. And I would like to hear from you, too, because I know that there's a lot of people that's intrigued with, 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 with people like me, of my background, ex and members and everything that's in my background, that I would like to hear from them. And I, through here in the prison, all you got to do is, because I got a tablet, all you got to do is you got to, all you do is you write to me in my tablet, because I would like to hear to you. It's Francisco Cornejo, C-O-R-N-E-J-O, T-300-300-32. And all you do is you, you go to JPay Media account, you put a dollar, two dollars, and that gives you the okay to correspond with me in my tablet. Well, I could hear, you can email me, and I, I could, you could send me pictures or whatever. And I would like to hear from you, because I would like to hear what you got to say. All anybody that's hearing this, like I told you, my intention when I share my story is to help 